Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. So, last episode we set up our little cow farm down there. This is so that we can farm pink slime. And we're also taking their sewage, composting it, and we're making fertilizer with this thing. The pink slime we are sending down to our mob farm where we have some looting upgrades in here. We also looked at expanding our applied energistic system and hooked up some storage buses to the outputs of some of the machines that we've got. So, we're making slow and steady progress. In between episodes, I have been crafting up a lot more machine cases. I was able to make 12 of the Tesla core machine cases which take the enhanced machine parts and these are all used in the industrial foregoing machines. So the goal for this episode is to get the quarry and the reason we would love to get the quarry is to automate some basic resources. Every time I go to batch craft something there's never enough that I can put in the chests and we always fall short which means that I have to do multiple runs of the same ingot and that takes way too much time. So. Let's work towards this quarry. And you may be wondering, how are we going to power this thing? Well, I'm not actually sure yet, so we're going to come back to that. But first of all, let's actually craft this thing. So this takes the brown slime ingots, which we made last time. And this is just so that we can get our first machine frame, which I believe will be a quest. Which gives us some more brown slime for free. And we can now make our first quarry. Welcome to the age of not being low on any material. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Alright, so we need both the shape card and the builder. So to get the builder, we need some mithril. I don't think we have quite enough mithril for this yet though. Yeah, we have one block. We're missing a couple of ingots of this. So we need some more mana dust, more demon lord, and more platinum. So I wonder, can we make a full stack of mana dust? I have been running some things through our automation for this, so I think we should be able to get enough for the full stack. Oh, actually, no, this takes RF powder. Mm, uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of RF powder. But we can make more RF powder. And in fact, we can do a full stack of this stuff. And I'm going to use 16 of it for the mana dust. It looks like we already had some in our system. Okay, 24 is fine. We do have a healthy supply of platinum, so we can use some of this. And then the rest is the Demon Lord, which we're waiting on some more Lunar Reactive Dust. But apart from that, the other parts for the builder actually aren't too bad. We need some ME drives, which do take some radiator blocks, which is some HOP graphite, but we have some of this by now. Uh, I think we can actually make two of these ME drives. We're just missing a little bit of HOP graphite. And at some point, we should really set up our other squeezer for coke dust as we're still just stealing off this one. <laughs> Alright, so we can craft the four block placers that we need. I made up some more material for the mithril ingots that we need. And I was going to say craft the builder, but uh, it looks like I made a little mistake here. I didn't notice that these were block placers and the top ones were block breakers. Uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Alright, well there's some machine frames wasted. Alright, it's two block placers that we need and two block breakers. And now we can make our builder. And we got a trophy. Nice. But the other thing we need, of course, is the shape card, which just takes a little bit of electrical steel. Definitely going to claim these quest rewards. Very nice quest rewards there. But for this to mine resources in the world, we need the quarry card. And what is the recipe for this thing? Oh, would you look at that? Block breakers. <laughs> that was totally 100% planned. Well, I guess we needed those blocks after all. And there is our quarry shape card. The next quest here also wants us to make either the Silk Touch Quarry or the Fortune Quarry. I'm actually not sure which one I'm going to go for, so I'm going to hold off on that maybe till later on. So now we need to decide where we want to put this thing. And obviously I don't really want to place it anywhere near here, because it's going to mine a big hole in the world. So ideally we would want it in the Deep Dark actually. But looking at the recipe for the Deep Dark Portal, we need four blocks of quintuple compressed cobblestone. And we also need a quantum disc, which is going to take a bit more crafting to get. We do have this very slow igneous extruder producing us cobblestone, but I think we're going to have to look at some upgrades for this today. And since we still can't craft these upgrade kits from Thermal Foundation, uh, it's maybe a good idea to look into a different cobblestone generating method. There is the material stonework factory, but I don't know if this is going to be fast enough, even with the speed upgrades. So instead, we're going to use the much cheaper transfer node. And we'll also need the mining upgrade for this. Alright, so I moved the cobblestone down from this igneous extruder. We have our transfer node with some water and lava on each side, some speed upgrades and the upgrade mining. And this is much, much faster than the igneous extruder was. And I guess we'll use the igneous extruder to make stone instead. So other than the cobble that which we're just waiting on, we need a lot of dark steel, which I have been batch crafting. But we also need this quantum disc. And this thing is in the right hand side of our chapter 11 in the quest book here. So to make this disc, we need a fair amount of this dark stone, which is dark steel and stone. I don't know how much of this stuff we need, so let's just open up the quests and see where we're at. So the next quest, it looks like we need to make some industrial grade graphite. And for this, we need our dark stone, some graphite bars. Finally, I use for these things. <laughs> 
and some HOP graphite, which again requires us to squeeze some more coke dust. So I think instead of sharing the one over by the farm, I'm just going to build another one. It was about time that we got this thing up and running. We just need to give it some power and we'll hook up some input and output chests for this. Oh, wrong position for the output. This is fluid output. We want the item input outputs. There we go. So I made up a little bit more dark stone, which we're going to alloy smelt with the other materials. So that gives us the ore, and now we have to make our hyper diamonds. So for this we have to, it looks like blow up the graphite dust. So I wonder what the best way to process this ore is. I wonder if we can sag mill it with the grinding balls for extra, extra chance output. It doesn't show up here in JEI, but it looks like every other source is a maximum of two. So we may as well use the sag mill just in case we get the increased output of this. So I'm assuming this works like the singularity does in applied energistics. Let's just try it with a small amount to begin with, just to make sure. Ah, it worked. Awesome, we got our hyper diamonds. Nice, so this opens up two more materials which we need for the portal. First of all, we have to make some advanced circuits, which takes some of the hyper diamonds, some vibrant alloy, some ender crystals, which are made from enderium. Although I'm sure actually the endermen drop these. I could be wrong about that though. Yeah, it looks like they must. We have 32 in our system and probably a lot more at our end farm. And the last piece for this circuit is these estimation circuits. And to make these, we need the estimation press. I'm not sure if we've got one of these, but we also need these cloth rates, which take rosin. And we did make this a couple of episodes ago, but I kind of repurposed all of the machines. And so, yeah, we have to set up this back up. So rather than using the sawmill like we've done before, I'm going to switch out to using the arboreal extractor. And this thing works just by placing it near a naturally gro grown tree, and it will just automatically generate the resin that we need. The question is, though, where do we want this tree? And you know what? Why not incorporate a little nature into our base? So we're going to put a little feature here. Now we just have to run some cable. I'm going to use fluid duct for this since it's cheaper than the conduit and this thing is not particularly fast as you can see it's only produced 400 millibuckets of resin so we don't need tremendous throughput on the on the fluid conduits here. All right so the tree oil is then going to go into a fractionating still where it gets distilled into the rosin that we need and this is going to get mixed with our cloth rates. This also does give us a tree oil byproduct which I'm not sure if we'll need later on so just in case we're going to store it in an iron drum and then our coated cloth rates will go output to this drawer here. And in fact, we can probably hook this up to our drawer network. Yeah, we just have to put some framed trim in here and it should connect to this drawer network, which is connected to our applied energistic system. So we do still have to automate the input of these resonant cloth rates, but at least the rosin is now fully automated. And in fact, maybe we should add a buffer for this. Yeah, I've moved everything up one block so that we can fit a drawer here to buffer our rosin. And that way we don't just buffer one stack that sits in the induction smeller. And on the back, I just have some item conduits to transfer the items around. And so these coated cloth rates now have to go into the inscriber with the inscriber press. And we actually want to keep these as the estimation circuits. We don't want them as processors yet. And yeah, at some point we will be rebuilding this thing again. <laughs> I think I mentioned that last time though. All right, and with those, we can now craft our advanced circuits and the cubic crystals. And after making up some more brown slime, we can make our last component of the portal that we need, which is our quantum disk. Two free advanced circuits, I'll take those. So making those hyper diamonds also unlocked integrated dynamics for us, which is a very interesting mod. I played a bit with this in interactions. It's very, very powerful, the things you can do with it. Anyways, how much cobblestone do we have by now? 4,000 compressed? Is that enough to get us? I don't think it is, right? Not quite. We can only get up to six quadruple compressed. I think we need five quintuple compressed. Yeah, so we need to wait a little bit more on the cobblestone. Alright, so while we wait on the cobblestone to get our builder up and running, I've taken some time to clear out the old farm. I'm not sure yet what's going to fill its space, but that's something I wanted to do for a while. Something else we have to think about when we set up this quarry is how we're going to transport our items back here, as obviously they're going to be in a different dimension. And I think one of the only options we have right now is the dimensional transceiver. This is also going to allow us to send power, but to get this thing, as you can see, the recipe is quite different to default. <laughs> so we need these ender casings, which requires us to get into actually additions. We need melodic capacitors, which take dark solarium, and this requires the elevatium ingots. This is the next major ingot we have to get to in chapter 12, which is over here. So taking a look at the recipe for this thing, we have to do the atomic reconstructor with these empowered crystal bundles, which is more of the empowered recipes, and then this takes glod crystals. And this thing takes a bunch of random components, one of those being wild wheat. 
All of the roots crops which were grown in this farm, temporary farm here are actually going to be used later on in recipes like this. And I've pinned all of the ones that we're going to need. For example, we need infernal bulbs later on for uh, Restonia. And of course the wild wheat for the Glod crystals. So while we're setting up one, we may as well automate the rest of them. Um, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to move this farming station. And we're going to use a plant sower. And also a plant gatherer combination from industrial foregoing. The reason I want to switch to the plant sower is we can plant 9 different crops. And conveniently we have 9 items pinned here that we need from roots. So it means that we can get away with one plant sower. And we can even add some range up upgrades on this and take it up to the full 15 by 15 Alright, so we've got some things changed around here. What I decided to do was move the canola up one. So this used to sit on the bottom layer. And the reason for that is because the plant gatherer has to go on the side here. And since we already have our item conduit running underneath here, it's going to be easier to hook this thing up rather than trying to run a separate item conduit um, more or less up to here. And then the plant store has to be one below the surface of the soil, which isn't ideal for down here. It means that it, it's not as easy to hide. Um, I'll, we'll have to figure something out for this thing. And also the conduits, we need some facades for these things. So yeah, the canola has been moved up one, and that meant that I had to move up the, the trees and the chorus. And I don't think I mentioned before, but I did plant some chorus here for the melodic alloy that we need. So one of you guys mentioned in the comments that you can actually plant these roots herbs on any type of soil. It doesn't have to be the soil it lists. So now we can configure this bottom farm with the industrial forgone machines for each of the roots crops that we need. So it doesn't really matter which order they go in. Configure one for each slot, basically. And it looks like it, the stack size is only 16 on these things. And we can lock this so that it remembers which seed to plant. And then unpause. And hopefully we should see all of these getting planted now. This thing does look like it's quite a bit slower than the Ender IO Farmer. But again, it's more versatile and this thing doesn't need to be blazing fast. We, I don't think, need tons of this stuff. But we also get a nice bonus of this in that we are using these for our root spells. So we need to use Perescia, Stalacrape and Cloudberry is the main ones for our Sky Sower spell here. So yeah, once these things are grown, we will have to set some extra drawers down here. I actually don't know if we're going to have enough space here. We may have to redesign this room a bit. As I believe we're going to get the seeds and the plants for this, and that way there's not going to be enough space for the drawers here. Alright, so I ended up just making this walkway a little bit smaller. This used to be five blocks wide, and I've just tightened it up to three. And that meant we can get an extra two rows of drawers, and I've also added some up the top as well. And I've added the extra items to our drawers. We're going to put uh, void upgrades on all of the seeds, I think. Since the seeds are pretty much useless. It's just the, the bulbs and the plants that we want to keep. This setup seems to be working quite nicely. I've got all the items configured. So I also did hook up the seeds back into the plant sower. Uh, with a higher priority. So that it prioritizes planting the crops first. And then any excess will go into the storage drawers. So yeah, I wonder if we have enough cobble now. I did manage to make up three quintuple compressed. We're only missing a few quadruple. Let's see if we've got enough. Oh, it looks like we do. Yeah, there's our fourth quintuple compressed, which means with some dark steel, we need, I think, four blocks of this. We actually can craft our portal to the deep dark. Nice. So because we're still a ways off getting the dimensional transceiver, I think it's actually worth setting up our builder here. And to power it, I've decided just to fill a advanced energy cube. This thing can hold 12 million RF. I'm still not sure how much this thing consumes, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. So let's take a trip to the deep dark. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not sure what awaits us here exactly. I have been to the deep dark before in other packs, but um, I'm curious if there's any custom ore generation or anything like that. I really, really hope we can get oil sands in this place. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, so I think that we spawn here at more or less the top of the world. We do have to dig down a bit. Oh yeah, here we go. You know what? Maybe we should actually set up our builder at the top of the world. It does mean that it'll take a while and have to go through all, like scan through all of the blocks to reach the ore down there. But it's going to make it much easier to come and collect the items for now. And we can just put down our builder like right here. I think it outputs to the top, so we'll put a drawer controller on top of this. And then we'll have to set the dimensions for this thing, so I'm not actually sure what the max range is. Let's maybe take it up to just doing 16 by 16. And we'll just try and get it to mine all the way down to bedrock. Oh, it's trying to mine behind us. Uh, hold on. I kind of wanted to mine this chunk out in front of it. 
All right, so it took a little bit, but I think I've got this configured now. So it's gonna mine out this chunk that we're in. So I think we need to give this a redstone signal for it to run. For now, I'm just gonna put a storage crate on the top just to see what kind of items we get. And then we'll, we'll figure out the drawers and the filtering afterwards. We'll also give it some power output on the left hand side all right so that filled the buffer and i think we just have to give it redstone oh yeah how quickly is this draining mm, that's a bit faster than what i would like let's also just tell it to void the stone uh, i think once we get our dimensional transceiver we'll want to keep these items but doing this just means it's more for us to transport back so for the time being we'll just void all that stuff oh wait did that not actually apply well you know what in that case let's let's just use the drawers with the void upgrades on there we can always just avoid the cobblestone. And yeah, it looks like we're about half half empty on our energy cube already, and we're still at the cobblestone level. So either we have to make a few of these things, or we have to kind of rush the dimensional transceiver. In fact, I wonder, can we upgrade this thing? We are only at advanced tier. The next tier just takes some energetic silver. Oh, and this holds more than double as well. What about the tier after that? That's just some atomic alloy. This is 108 million. Yeah, we may, we may as well upgrade to the final tier. It does take quite a bit of Osco glass, but I did batch craft this to make the energy cube. But 108 million should last us a lot longer than 12 million, and at least buy us enough time to set up the dimensional transceiver. Yeah, you know what? I think we'll make two of these things. So one we can have charging at our base, and the other one we can put on the quarry there. So there's two of the elite, and we just have to upgrade them one more time. And we have two ultimate energy cubes. Obviously, these things are going to take forever to charge with our diesel generator, though. But I guess it's all we've got right now. Power is basically free for us, though, since we're just being powered by canola. So it's not like we're using any oil or anything like that to power this thing. It's just basically time. So in the meantime, let's look at chapter 12, which is actually additions, which requires some of this iron casing. I was having a look at how much of this stuff we'll need, and I think we're going to make two of these for now. We'll need one in powder, and we'll also need the atomic reconstructor. Oh, wow, these... Even these casings take the RF tools machine frames. So I guess this is the upgrade. We don't quite have enough machine frames though. All right, there's one and we're just missing some dark gears. Okay. All right, but to upgrade it, we just need some black quartz uh, and some iron plates. So the upgrade at least is cheap. So there's our two iron casings. And this leads us on to the atomic reconstructor, which looks like it takes two more of these quantum disks we made earlier. And a materializer from integrated dynamics. It looks like we will have to get the mineral sapling for this. Yeah, with the excess mithril, we were able to craft our sapling. And you know what? It probably is worth swapping out these ender lilies now that we have our OP enderman farm. Uh, it's, so we basically don't need the ender lilies anymore. And we can grow mineral wood instead. Oh, it looks like our farming station's been starved of power here. The, those energy cubes must be sucking up all the power we're generating. But we only need a little bit right now, so we'll set the drawers for these. And that way we can at least get on and craft our materializer. You know, I think mineral wood may actually be one of my favorite types of planks in the game. I used it in my interaction space. That's basically what all the roof material was. I love the look of these planks. Let me know what kind of planks you guys like. I heard some people talking about the charred wood from this pack. But cutting a few trees by hand gives us enough mineral chunks to make the blocks of mineral. And then we need, uh, oh, another ME drive. All right. And also some more of these operation processors. They're starting to be used more and more now. We should definitely look into getting this thing set up. All right, but with that and two more quantum disks, we can make our atomic reconstructor. So now we're gonna to want to get down to the empowerer, but to get the empowerer, we do need some display stands for this as well. And to do that, we're gonna need some Restonia, some double batteries, which takes some emir emiratic. Oh, we even need the glod for this. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say, glod. But to make the empowerer, we actually need some extra display stands along with it. So we need to, a total of seven display stands, and these things are not cheap on their own. These take machine casings and pink slime. Oh man, lots of quartz here as well. I don't know if we'll have enough quartz for this thing. Even brown slime. Luckily, most of the conversion recipes are default though. Uh, there's no like silly conversions for the void crystals and the restonia and things like that. It looks like it's just redstone and lapis for the, the palis. I think it'll be diamonds for the diamatine, yeah. Some packs like to change this to make them in like impossible conversion recipes. So the way this thing works is we have to give it power. It does hold a massive buffer of 8 million, but we just have to give it a redstone signal and we get our conversion item. So I'm gonna start by just crafting probably a few stacks of each material. There's some quartz. and I think we need the chiseled version. 
some Restonia. And you guys were actually recommending Restonia for the laser gun, actually. As it has the hearts feature, I think this is some sort of healing effect. Alright, and after about 25 minutes or so of crafting, we can make our display stands. We need seven of these things total. Looks like I missed some gold casings. There's the seventh one. Is that a quest? I'm not sure. And we can also make our empowerer. Or maybe not. Oh, these batteries have to be full. Okay. Can we charge it in this immersive charger? Oh, we can. Cool. I came over here to check on the charge of our energy cubes, and it looks like we're almost there with this thing. But we somehow managed to charge our double batteries, which should give us the empowerer. Awesome, so this once again opens up many different options for us. The first one I want to rush towards though is the Elevatium, as we mentioned. Which is going to take some of these crystal bundles. And these crystal bundles take a bunch of uh, empowered crystals. Yeah, alright, so this is going to take a while to automate all this stuff. So the Emeradic takes Spirit Herb, we're growing this thing. Cactus, we're no longer growing, but we have quite a big backlog of this. Congealed slime. We'll have to somehow automate slime. I'm not sure exactly what the best way to do that is yet, though. Alright, so that's the Emeratic. The Diamantine is Vivid Alloy, which I don't think we've made yet. Energetic Silver, Ender Pearls. Cloudberries, we planted those today. Uh, clay, we don't have automated yet. And also looks like a hefty amount of Platinum here for the gears. And the Gold version, uh, we looked at this before. We're growing the Wild Wheat. We need some Lumium. I did make up some Lumium gears. When I was make when I was crafting all that stuff, I thought it was just going to be the Empowered Glod crystals. I didn't realise that we had to use these <laughs> Emeradic and also Diamantine crystals with it. But this looks like it takes more Energetic Alloy and some Blaze Rods, which we also have to automate somehow. We do have like half automated Blaze Powder, which we can convert to Blaze Rods. But it may be easier to set up a Nether Farm for Blaze. But um, yeah, this has just opened up a whole can of worms for us here. <laughs> And obviously we're going to want to automate this empowerer as well. So let's think about where we want to place this thing. One of the options is actually down here next to the extra utilities machines. Or a much easier option is probably to put it in this room and somehow expand over here. So I was having a look again at the recipe for the dimensional transceiver. And in total, of, of course we need two of these transceivers. One on this end and one at our builder. But in total we need 20 dark solarium. We need two for the capacitor and four for the actual craft itself. And each of these take one Elevatium ingots, which are made one-to-one -one for from these crystal bundles. But we get the regular crystal bundles six at a time, which means that this we only need to do this four times to get our dimensional transceivers. So when you break it down like that, it's only four emeraldic crystals, two crafts of the Glod, and three crafts of Diamantine, which actually seems much more reasonable. But before we get onto that, our energy cubes have actually filled up. So let's go over and take these to our builder. Alright, and we can even actually combine these two together to have them both feed into the builder since they're both full right now. But all we can do right now is just let this thing run. Oh, it looks like we're getting our first ore though. But yeah, as you can see, it has paused itself since there's no more drawer space, so we'll have to add some more drawers. Oh, it looks like we do get bitumen from this. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so good. That means that we can uh, use our bitumen for the, these dark ingots. And these dark ingots, just to recap, are used for the... Well, they're used in dark steel, which we need a lot of dark steel. And we also use these for conduit binder, which is going to allow us to get lots more energy and item conduits, which will help with the automation. But before we let this thing run anymore, let's look into our either silk touch or fortune quarry. I need to think about which one I'm going to go for. So after thinking about it some more, I think we're going to go for silk touch. And the reason for that is if we want to use fortune, we can just place the blocks down and mine them ourselves with fortune. But for most of the ore, the processing it with the sag mill and some grinding balls actually gives you much better yield. So I would like to have the option to process the ores and get more efficiency out of each ore. Either way, we're going to need some nether stars though. Which is super easy now that we have our laser gun. And just like that, we have two nether stars. To make the quarry card though, we do also need two enchanted silk touch books. I remember getting one of these from a quest reward, but I think I used it on the shovel. Yeah, this oil sands shovel. So that means we have to make some new ones. And we could just roll our luck on the enchanting table. But we have access to the Ender IO enchanter. And this thing, apart from the fact that it takes five blocks of dark steel, man, that's that's hefty. <laughs> In fact, we're out of dark steel now. Uh, yeah, apart from the fact that it's so expensive, we need some more open ingots for this as well. With this enchanter, we can actually pick which enchant we want. We just have to give it a book and quill and some e EXP. 
So I guess we'll do another three stacks of dark steel. We are getting very close to autocrafting though, I think. It is on the next page over here. We do need iridium still for this stuff. Which means I think we have to go through some mechanism brine and lithium production. But I think maybe one, maybe two episodes will be at autocrafting, which is going to be amazing. I'm so looking forward to getting interfaces. And in fact, I was thinking about this, the way this room is turning out. I think I may rebuild all of this stuff. I'm not sure yet though. Just, just to be clear though, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to rebuild the whole base. I just mean reconfigure some of these machines. I don't want you to think that all of this is going to get torn down. Just the machine configurations once we get auto crafting. Oh, a quest. Well, I got the rest of the dark steel processed and we can make our enchanter. So to get the silk touch book, we just need some lapis and slime balls. Does this thing take power? I don't remember. No, it doesn't look like it does. All right, well, there's one. And we just need a few more levels. And now we can upgrade our quarry card, which oh, I actually, <laughs> I left that at the deep dark. Hold on. All right, let's upgrade this thing to the silk quarry. No quest? Oh, we need two for the quest. Oh, okay. Well, we may we may or may not end up crafting the fortune one. But we can stick this back inside our builder. Oh, it, it looks like it reset these uh, these parameters that we set here. I did keep a note of them though, so we have them back. This should be back to where it was. And this also means we will have to change some of these drawers. I don't think we're going to get Zerus Quartz anymore. Or Bitumen. We're going to get the ore version. Same with clay. I think we'll get blocks of clay instead. I believe the Silk Touch Quarry also consumes more power. I don't know how much more power, but uh, I think it's scanning all the air blocks right now to get back to where it was. But yeah, this is a huge milestone getting this quarry. And so I'm just going to take some time and set up the rest of these drawers, let this run between episodes. I think we'll come back tomorrow and continue down this glod route for these Elevatium ingots. These are actually going to take a lot more than what I first anticipated, especially with all these empowered recipes. But yeah, that's going to do us for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.